This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I know it's hard to believe, but right now in 2021, this is the only 4K 16 inch drawing tablet you can buy. And it's not made by Wacom, it's made by Huya. Hey, it's me, Brad, and this is the new Huion Canvas Pro 16. This is the first Huion tablet with a 4K screen. For years, Huion and XP Pen have been narrowing down that quality gap with Wacom's products, and these higher resolution screens are just another step in that direction. There's two variations of this tablet you could pick up from Huion right now. There's the Pro 16 4K, and there's the Pro 16 Plus 4K, and the only difference between these is the color gambit and the contrast ratio. The one you're gonna see in my video here today is the Non Plus, the Canvas Pro 16 4K. It's interesting to see as Huion has added more features to the displays like 4K screen, we also have seen their prices go up and, and it makes sense. A Lexus costs more than a Toyota. At $829, this is no longer a cheap budget Wacom alternative, but I think I can say it's the best 16 inch pen display on the market right now, but also the most expensive one as well. I keep track of all of my reviews over on my website, brad.site, I rank all this stuff, and I've put this at the top of that list. Wait, Brad, what are you saying? What about the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16? It's more expensive, right? It was more expensive, but Wacom no longer sells that model. You can't buy one, at least not new. It's a shame because I love these 16 inch tablets. I think this is my favorite size. A little over a year ago, Wacom released the Cintiq 16, no word pro in there, but I think that is a far inferior tablet to this in several ways. We're gonna be digging into that a little bit later, but first let's look at what you could expect to find when you open the box. In the box, we have the display itself. This is a pen display. That's the official category name for these kinds of products. It plugs into your computer, like a Windows or a Mac computer, even an Android device, and it acts as an extra monitor that you can draw on. Keep in mind, this looks like a Windows tablet. It's not, it's just the screen. It needs to be plugged into a computer, and it needs to be plugged into a power outlet to work. It comes with this protective plastic over it, so it's not gonna scratch while it's shipping. Warm tip. Peel it off before using. It also has this aluminum finish to the back and overall it's light, it's slim, it feels pretty well built. What else do we have here? A stand, now this is a decent stand. I've seen this stand packed in with several of Huion's products over the year. I'm glad it's included here. It's a good value. You could set it at any of the preset levels that it comes with. You know, it's not an exotic stand, but it gets the job done. You're gonna find an angle that works for you. Also has these rubber grips on the front, so the tablet itself is it's not gonna slide around while you're drawing on it. it. Has rubber grips on the bottom, so it's not gonna slide around on the table while you're drawing on it. Then there are the connection cables. You can connect this via USB-C or through the HDMI and USB-A ports. Again, Huion does a good job of making sure all of the cables that you need are provided here. There's also a power plug. This does need to be plugged in at all times work. There's no battery here. So people often ask me about these kinds of products. Is it portable? Uh, Kind of. I mean, it's light. You can put it into your bag if, if your bag is big enough. It is kind of a larger tablet. But it's not portable the way an Android tablet or a Windows PC or an iPad or something like that is portable because it doesn't have a battery and it requires all of these cables. There's the pen, which I'm going to talk about a lot in a little bit, and a little pen pouch. This is new. I kind of like this pouch. What's not new is the pen donut. Huion has been including these with their tablets for quite some time. It's a nice place to set your pen when you're not using it. Also doubles as extra storage for those pen nibs if any of yours wear out. Also, we have a little bag with your warranty, some customer info in there, an instructions setup guide, and a nice little cleaning cloth. And oh yeah, look at this, a drawing glove. You know who should make a drawing glove? Nintendo should make a drawing glove. Wouldn't that be cool, right? This screen is 4K. That's what makes it special and what makes it expensive, relatively speaking. So you have a resolution of 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels. In the past, we only had HD, full HD screens 
on these devices. So this is a big deal. When you get to these 16 inch screens, it's really, really nice to get these higher resolutions, especially on a drawing tablet. You get closer to a drawing tablet screen than you get to a laptop screen, which is sitting away from you. You're hovering over it. You notice that level of quality. The screen is also laminated, which means there isn't a gap between the glass and the drawing screen below it, which makes it feel more accurate than older pen displays. I mentioned this lamination because Wacom Cintiq 16 I was talking about earlier, doesn't have that. In fact, I think that's a feature that I missed a lot more than the higher resolution on that Wacom 16. And that Wacom 16 is awfully high priced for what you're getting. This screen has both a higher resolution and a laminated display, and together those make a big a difference. The Cintiq Pro line has those better screens. They're also etched glass. It's not a coating like this is, so that's really nice. The Wacom's are also touch enabled. That's important to point out. That touch enabled thing can be kind of hit or miss, but like I said, Wacom no longer makes that 16 inch pro model. The screen has a matte finish applied to it. Now this is semi matte. It's more of an anti glare finish. That's probably how I would describe it. That's nice because when you're using a drawing tablet, what ends up happening is the lights that are above you get reflected on the tablet below. Having some kind of finish on there makes it a lot more usable. Also, it's providing you with some drawing resistance. So it's not a slippery, smooth surface. It's something that's easy to draw on. There's a little drag to the pen. It gives you more control and it makes me a happier illustrator. One thing that's missing on these displays are the shortcut keys. This is probably something Huyang cut to trim the price down a little bit. On a 16 inch tablet, I didn't really miss it too much because I could have my keyboard off to the side. Personally, I'm a shortcuts guy. I don't use a lot of them, but I like to set three or four of them to like undo or brush size, something like that. It makes my workflow a lot easier. So I will admit I missed the shortcuts a little. What about those pen specs? Well, I have a lot to say about the pen. First, I want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features that you need to make your products look Look their best online. All websites are optimized for mobile devices. Your content automatically adjusts so your site looks good anywhere. Grow and engage your audience with Squarespace's email campaigns. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo so your message is consistent and effective. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragcolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. This pen is what I expected. It's using Huion's Pentec 3.0, so we've got 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity and 60 degrees of tilt. So let's take a look and see what this pen does. The first thing I wanna look at is pressure sensitivity, and when I press harder, I get a thicker line, and when I press less hard, I get a thinner line. And what I'm looking for are just areas where the pen is blowing out areas where I'm just getting some kind of irregularity in the line based on how much pressure I'm applying. And like I expected from most Huion pens, this is performing really well. This is exactly what I would expect in terms of pressure sensitivity. The other thing I like to take a look at are fast lines, and I like to see how those lines end. And oftentimes what happens with many of these pens is you get some really weird tapers. I don't think that's the case here. I think these are looking very nice. It's a very smooth, natural taper. So that looks good to me. Now, the last thing that I'm going to take a look at, and I'm going to shrink my pen size down a little bit, are slow angle of lines. And what I'm seeing here is a tiny bit of wave. Uh, nothing too terribly bad. And I'm going to go grab a ruler because I want to show you that it's not just my hand that's producing the wave, but it's the pen. Now, I also want to point out this is exactly what I've seen from pretty much every Huion pen that I have tested over the last, I don't know, year and a half, two years. Uh, so this is exactly what I expected, and I think this is well within the range of acceptable pen wave or a little bit of pen wiggle. And the reason why is most programs like Photoshop, what I'm using here, have the ability to turn on some kind of smoothing or line straightening in order to smooth that out. Now, sometimes you get too much jitter, too much pen wave, like you'll see on the Surface Pro, and you have to turn up the smoothing so high that it makes the pen just too slow. The, the cursor is gonna lag too far behind. 
But I find that if I turn this up to say 14%, which I have here, and I go a little slower, I'm gonna knock most of that wave out. And if I speed up my lines a little bit, like I would more naturally draw, with the smoothing out a little bit, I've pretty much eliminated that wave entirely, which is what I'm looking for. Pros and cons? Well, the pros, obviously, that screen for sure, it looks great, and it really makes this device feel a lot more premium and a lot more modern. The con, of course, is that increases the price of this device. This is going to put it out of the price range of a lot of people who are looking for a Wacom alternative, and this really puts it in the range of a Wacom full-on competitor. Another pro worth mentioning here is that this does work with some Android phones and tablets. I tested it a little, and to be honest, I would not buy this to use on an Android phone. The, the apps on Android are built to work with touch, and so what ends up happening is you're drawing on your tablet over here, and then you're going to your phone, and you're using the touch there. It's a very disjointed experience. It's not an experience I like. Totally works. You can use it that way, but I don't think that should be your focus. Your focus should be using this on Windows or a Mac. Huion has been diversifying. No longer are they just making the cheapest drawing tablets they can make, but they've been making things in different price ranges and really closing that quality gap that we've seen a long time with Wacom. I love having a 4K screen. This might be the display that gets me to stop using this Cintiq 24. Yeah, I, I like it that much. I don't necessarily think it's better in every way than the Seed Teak 24, but the 24 is too big for my desk. I'd rather have something this size that I really like, and finally, I do. The good news for those of you who are looking for a budget display is Huion is still making a lot of those 16-inch displays with lamination at a lower resolution for a lot less money. So if you can't afford this, totally understand, they're not leaving you out in the cold. So what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.